Hello everybody, good evening and welcome to the United Stand. We're live, I'm back. It's been a few nights, but it's good to be back in the chair as we talk about Ten Hag's Rasmus Hoyland transfer warning for Manchester United. He's, he's running out of targets. He's running out of strikers. And with Bayern Munich entering the race, Christian Falk has confirmed this. Fabrizio Romano mentioned it this afternoon. Ten Hag cannot afford to miss out on this striker target. There are literally hardly any left. He would be down to fifth or ch sixth choice. Osman is about to sign a new contract. Harry Kane is not gettable. They've got to they've got to get him Hoyland. We'll also be talking about an article in the Guardian that says that Qatar is still very confident of getting Manchester United. We'll talk about where we are with that. Also the goalkeeper situation. And because I've not been here for a few nights, you might want to get your questions in and ask a few things as well. So let's hit it. We're live on the United Stand, and it's great to be back. It's great to be back. I I, I must admit, I mean, I, I was away. Oh, I was in such a bad mood on Friday night. Went away. I can say where I went. I was at Centre Parks in Woburn Forest in Bedfordshire. Saw a few people there. Um, got recognised a bit. But the, the funniest bit was on the Lazy River. I was going around with Seb and uh, these lads were there. And all, all I could hear was, George, George, it's Goldbridge, George. It's Goldbridge. But they never came around and said hello. By George, it was Goldbridge. But um, the internet was crap. Um, the internet was really bad. I recorded like five minutes and I went to upload it and it took, it said it was going to take uh, 68 minutes to upload. So uh, if you're going to centre parks and you want to upload things, it's going to take some time. Normal internet activities, you're absolutely fine. It won't buffer, but uh, there we go. Uh, what do you think the official statement will be released regarding the sale of the club? I'm thinking by the end of the week, says Oscar. Can we talk about that in a little bit? But um, yeah, let's, let's fly into it. Um, so, look, where are we at? I can't offer you any more news about Rasmus Hoyland because I've been saying to you for about three weeks, hotter than the sun, this deal, United are well into it. It's refreshing and nice, but I was always confident to have people like Fabrizio Romano and many other people now coming out saying that this deal is there for United to do. To, to know that that information, well, I know that information was good because I know where it bloody came from and it was very, very close. So um, without saying too much, but um, it looks like, it, 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 you know, it's there for United to do. But so was Kim Min Jae. So, so was Alexi McAllister. So was Declan Rice. United could have done a lot of deals this summer. There's a lot of players that want to play for Manchester United and Eric Ten Hag. We are, we are not in a situation where it's a new manager and a leap into the unknown. And we are not in a situation where it's a bad manager who's had a bad season. We're in, Ten Hag's been in here a year. He's proved himself to be Premier League capable. And he took us to third and he won a trophy. So there's a lot of people that would come to Manchester United. But also it comes down to money. Now, United have missed out on a few targets already. Good mood, Bridge, says James. Thank you very much. Thanks for being a member for 10 months. Um, so, but the strike is the big concern for me. We can talk about the goalkeeper in a little bit. But look. The, the cold, harsh facts about the Manchester United striker situation was this. If he could buy two strikers, Eric Ten Hag would buy Kane and Hoyland. That's what he would do. Um, if he couldn't get those two, he would have gone Evan Ferguson and Osman. Um, if he couldn't get those two, he probably would have gone Mawani and maybe Ramos. So there were six strikers that he quite liked the look of this summer transfer window. Evan Ferguson was off the plate very, very early. Harry Kane is off the plate. Uh, Victor Rosman is now off the plate. If you didn't get the latest news, this is coming in from Italy. Fabrizio tweeted it as well. Um, Victor Rosman is about to sign a new two-year contract with Napoli. There is a little bit of a retainer there that if anybody comes in with an unworldly bid, they would accept it, Napoli. So an unworldly bid would be 150 million euros, um, which nobody's going to do maybe Chelsea, but no, Man United aren't going to do that. So we're out the Osman race. Kane, we can't get into. Evan Ferguson has stayed. And that leaves you with Mawani, Evan Ferguson and Rasmus Hoyland and Ramos as well. So we've got four options there. But, um, you know, Kane's gone. No, Evan Ferguson's gone. So you've got three options left. Mawani, Ramos and Hoyland. So you're down to... It's hard to rank them, but you're definitely... You know, Ten Hag is definitely down to option three or four. Um, Rasmus Hoyland and Evan Ferguson would, were felt to be the younger options Ramos and Mawani were meant to be the middle of the road options and number one options were going to be Osman and Kane so he's not getting the, 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 the class A targets, he's not, he's already down to you know, B and C options um, he cannot miss out on Rasmus Hoyland because that would be both of his young strikers not, not gettable 
Ver Ferguson's not gettable, Hoyland would be gone, and both of his star strikers not gone. So that's what I mean about last chance. This for Ten Hag is he always wanted a top class striker and a young striker. So go Kane and Ferguson, go Osman and Hoyland, it doesn't matter. Can't get Kane or Osman, can't get Ferguson. If he can't get Hoyland, he's missed out on the two young strikers he wanted and the two star strikers he wanted. And then he's got to try and get Mawani and Ramos, who are overpriced. They're both 100 million euros at the moment. So this is the last chance saloon for United. I don't know... that I hear a lot of things from United. I don't know how they feel around this transfer window. Normally, it's squeaky bum time from the start. They're under huge pressure. They know they're not very good at their job. They know they get a lot of stick from the fans. But I think they expected something a little bit more positive. And at the moment, it's really not going their way. They're not helped by the sale, but it's really not going their way. I mean, that they, they, they can't keep it quiet who they want. They can't do what Liverpool does, quiet, get the deal done. Um, and at the moment, it's a struggle. And Rasmus Hoyland is now a real, you know, you know they've, they've got to get that deal done. Mark, think any of the Manchester clubs get Rice as Carlos? I think if I think if Man City want him, they can compete with Arsenal. FIFA Crazy, thanks for your super chat. He says, is it possible United struggling with transfers because they can't buy players over instalments due to the sale? Glazers have to pay all fees up front, says FIFA Crazy. I don't know that. I don't know about that, mate. And I'm glad you're back. Wife's not as happy, says Scott. Well, why? I, 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 I refute any claims about Scott's wife. Um, Mark, we could lose all our keepers this summer. Concerning. Love the show, by the way, says Psycho. So when I show speed announced for the Sidemen match, now we need to be announced to get the Cristiano and Fergie meme back. Mark in hashtag Goldbridge ball, says Nathan Allen. Mate, I, I, I don't know. Like, I don't know whether I'll get asked to do back to do that. I mean, you know, uh, I'd like to, but... You know, if I don't, I don't. I, you know, I loved it last year and I can't I can't speak. Um, but with regards to more pressing business, um, it, it is a concern. Like the striker is what we need. Um, and you can think what you like about Marcus Rashford. And there's no doubt he'll score goals for United next season. But you cannot be in a situation as a football club. And, and, and look, forget the Glazers for a minute. Forget the director of football. Forget Ten Hag. You can't be a football club like Manchester United, who makes a massive stride of progression from, what, 59 points and no trophy in five or six years to Ten Hag's first season, third place, Champions League qualification and a trophy. That's a huge stride of progress. It's a huge slice of cake. You cannot then go, well, that's it. And that's what we're worried about. It's almost like, well, that's it. You know, pre perform another miracle next year. There has to be a reward for the miracle that Ten Hag... I mean, you can call it a miracle. I would call it a great season that, he, you know, he, he performed. You can't not... You can't sit back and do nothing. And the striker is the priority position. You're not getting Harry Kane. You're not getting Victor Rosamon. You're not getting Evan Ferguson. You've, you know, Rasmus Hoyland, you've got to get. Mawani's going to be very expensive and so will Ramos. So this promising summer that we stepped into thinking, oh, you know, and look, I was always a little bit like Harry Kane for me. I was a little bit like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, well, we do know very, very quickly that we can't do it. The board is not showing their confidence this window, which is bad news for them when the takeover finally goes through to the Inquisition. And hi, Mark. Can you shout out my uh, friend, Alex, that just sounds like you're trying to get me to say rude words. I can see it. Mount halfway through the preseason. Rabio joins on a free a week later. United way overspend on Hoyland just before dread right deadline day. No one is sold, says B Yakov. Um, you know, I think that the, I think that the summer transfer window is always a um a fluid thing, isn't it? It's always like you never know how it's going to go. Um what I would say is that I do feel that um you know, if I said to you, summer transfer window, I mean, we don't know what's going to happen with the goalkeeper. I'll, I'll give you some information on that in a minute. But if outfield, I, I mean, look, the Monaco centre-back, Rabio, Mason Mount and Hoyland, it's not as good as last year, is it? Like, And I like Hoyland and I think Mount might work. And Rabio's an interesting free transfer and the Monaco centre-back's interesting. But that is not... That is not an awe-inspiring transfer window. Hoyland, Mount, Rabio, and the Monaco centre-back. It's just not. It's not. And I don't think it's a massive step forward. And I like some of those players that he would be bringing in. 
But that's not going to make Pep Guardiola go, oh my God, we're in trouble next year. I think, you know, it worries me. It worries me how subpar this transfer window is looking at the moment because I know I was speaking to somebody like when I was away and they were saying, I'm, I'm confident, I think we'll still have a good window, Qatar might come in, we might spend a bit of money. And I said to them, but where are you going to spend that money? Harry Kane's not going, Victor Osman's not going, Declan Rice will be gone, Casido will be gone, Frankie de Jong's not leaving. So even if you've got the money, where is Kim Min Jae will be already gone. Um, where are you going to spend it? All right, you're going to buy a ball playing goalkeeper. What's he going to do? Get the ball at the back, run all the way through and whack it in the top corner. Like, the targets are there, but you, we, we're, just not, we're, we're just not playing the game. And we've all played the game. We've all seen this happen with United before. We cannot be surprised that there is so much uh, inertia in this summer. The Glazers have a history of doing very little after top four is reached, says Stephen Rossi. Um, first question... Thoughts on Rashford's contract, reportedly 370k a week. Does that fee match the talent compared to others in the Prem, says Rogine? Look, you know me, I'll never sit on the fence. Um, but you know me, I do like Marcus Rashford. I, I choose to flip this question and not make it about Rashford because ultimately footballers are greedy, their agents are greedy, they're out for themselves, they want a big pet piece of the pie, they're not there for the love of Manchester United, they're, they're there for the love of their pockets. Um, if United offered Rashford 200 grand a week, he'd run his contract down and go somewhere else. That's a fact. So, you know, just like any footballer, he's, you know, he's here to make money. Anthony loves Man United, but got 200 grand a week out of us when he was on 20k a week. So everybody's there to bleed United. It's about personal gain, of course. So I don't have an issue with Rashford on this. Is he worth 375 grand a week? No, he's not. I don't know what he is worth. He scored a lot of goals for us last year. But he's not a 375 grand a week player. It's bloody ridiculous. But Jaden Sancho's not a 300 grand a week player. Anthony's not a 200 grand a week player. Maguire's not a 200 grand a week player. Like United have been doing this for too long and they keep doing it. So my frustration is with the people who negotiate. The club is broken and it's still broken. And it doesn't matter how good a job Eric Ten Hag does. The club still makes the same stupid mistakes. It lets contracts run down. It ends up paying big wages. It can't sell players because it's given them big wages. And it can't buy players the manager wants because we lose out to other clubs. And that's where we're at now. There's a very fine line now. You, Ten Hag needs to ship Maguire out. Will he go? He's had a couple of games for England. He thinks he's bloody Bobby Moore again. You know, Maguire will probably go on holiday and go, I've just had a couple of games for England. I played really well. I can beat, I can get Varane and Martinez out of the team. I'm going nowhere, you know, so we're stuck with him. Um, you've got a situation where everybody knows we want Rasmus Hoyland now, and somebody might go, you know what, I quite fancy him. If you're not at a looking at him, I quite fancy him. Let's go in for him. Let's offer him a really good wage. Because Kim Min Jae we've missed out on because Bayern are offering him and his agent good money, which we can't afford. So we're on very thin ice already. The options are running out, and that's what I mean. You know, Hoyland in many ways is the last chance. Now, we're fortunate that there's a player there that wants to come to United, but ultimately it will come down to the offer that goes on the table. Mark, honestly, I don't care about signings anymore as much as the takeover. First summer I get this feeling out of not caring about it, says Omar. And uh, the board is not showing. I've done that one from there. Um, thank you very much to Stephen Rossi as well. So look, I think wh where we stand, where we stand at the moment is that it's getting rather precarious in the United transfer situation. Um, I suspected or hoped at the start of the summer you'd be looking at a striker like a Kane or an Osman, a younger striker. I've always wanted two, like a Ferguson or a Hoyland. Um, you know, if you want Mason Mount, that's fine. But a Casido, a Kim Min Jae. And a younger goalkeeper. That's what I was looking at. Right now, you know you're not getting Kane or Osman. Everything rests on Hoyland, who's you know a very young striker as well. Mason Mount, I mean, that's just not moving. Um, Rabio on a free is looking very likely. And some centre-back that's second or third choice, let's be honest. You know, and how many... How, how many more um, how many more miracles can Eric Ten Hag keep working? He wanted Timber, he got Martinez. He wanted Nunez, he got no striker. He wanted Frankie de Jong, he ended up with Casemiro, that worked out well. But how many more times can that keep happening? I want this player, I get that player. And it's already happening again. I want Kim Min Jae, I'm going to get some Monaco centre-back. 
I know I want Harry Kane or Osman. I'm going to have to go with a young striker. Um, it's it's problematic. And look, we we can talk about the goal. I want to talk about the ownership thing, but we can talk about the goalkeeper. Bryce Jones says thanks to all of United. Faz did a great job while you were gone. Says Bryce. Yeah, watch out tomorrow. Watch out tomorrow. We've got some good stuff coming up tomorrow. So just in relation to Faz, keep an eye on that. Qatar in and Glazers out. Says Bezad. Um, look. We're in silly season. Everybody wants to have a little bit of information that they've got that nobody else has got. I've been doing this long, 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 long uh, enough to know that that very rarely happens. Nobody's got a direct line into Man United where they just give you information. Doesn't matter whether you're Manchester Evening News, Fabrizio Romano, United Stand, some account on Twitter. Nobody's got the exclusive from Man United. That's just not how it works. You might get a little bit of information from an exclusive source in the dressing room, etc. But the goalkeeper situation at the moment is confusion. Some people are saying that it's Ten Hag that won't sign De Gea's contract off. That's not true. Um, some people have said that it's De Gea that won't sign the contract. That's not true. Um, some people are saying that Manchester United board will not sign it off because they want to get him to take another pay cut. That's not true. The truth is that United are in a situation with the goalkeeper where effectively they are changing their transfer plan, what feels like, by the minute. They wanted Verbruggen from Anderlecht. He's now going to go to Brighton. That's caused the problem. They thought they were going to spend £100 million on a striker. They're now probably going to spend 50 or 60 So they're now thinking, well, let's throw De Gea under the bus and tell him, you know, he's second choice. And we need to, you know, we don't, or, or he can go. And then let's try and get another goalkeeper for around £40 million quid because we're not spending £100 million on a striker anymore. It's, 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 it's basically transfer chaos at Manchester United. They're changing their plans by the minute because they're losing targets by the minute. So it's really difficult to understand what, why, why, the, why they've done this. But the way I look at it is I take the emotion out of it. I take the player out of it. I take the manager out of it. And I look at the, the way we are as a football club and I go, right, one thing. This is, a, this is a guy that's been an amazing servant to the club. There's ways to treat people, and this is not the way you treat people. You don't let them finish the season thinking there's a contract on the table and then remove it from them and say, we might want you to go. I think that's disgusting. Secondly, it doesn't mask the failure of you as a football club. This goalkeeper is still a Golden Glove winner. This goalkeeper is still a good goalkeeper. No matter how you rank him, he's still a good goalkeeper. And this goalkeeper is not 42. He's in his early 30s. He still has a value. You can't just say, we don't want you anymore, walk out the door just because he's on 350 grand a week when he's willing to sign a contract on 200 anyway. You're reducing that wage anyway. What you're actually doing is you're letting a goalkeeper in his early 30s walk out the door for nothing. And I don't care whether that's Dean Henderson, Harry Maguire or what. I wouldn't let Harry Maguire walk out the door for nothing. As much as I don't rate him, I wouldn't let him walk out the door for nothing. That's terrible business. So, look, I get that there are people out there, there'll be people in the chat that are so hungry to see us get a ball-playing goalkeeper. They, they, you know, they, they're happy to let De Gea go for nothing. But it, it's appalling business sense. And it's so late. Well, the transfer window's open. To be doing this, having spent the last six months working on a contract, to be doing this this late on, Regardless of Ten Hag's involvement, regardless of De Gea's involvement, regardless of the club's involvement, it's bloody appalling. It's absolutely appalling to be in a situation like this in June with your goalkeeper. And it's a massive impact on our transfer budget, by the way, because if De Gea stays and you went with a younger goalkeeper, it's very little spend. If De Gea goes and you have to spend 50 million or 40 million or 45 million or 60 million on Costa or Anana, that's a large chunk of your budget gone. Dean Henderson is ready to go to Nottingham Forest, but can't go because we don't know what's happening there. So look, I I don't even look at the De Gea situation about whether I want De Gea to go or not, or whether I want Anana to come in or not. I look at it and I go, why are we so shit? Like, why have we not figured this out? I mean, in fairness to you lot, you've been saying since Christmas we need a Costa. 
we need an Anana. United seem to have figured this out in June. And that terrifies me. So, look, I'm sort of bored of the pro-anti De Gea argument or the pro-this-goal-or-that-goalkeeper argument. I'm, I'm sort of looking at this and going, why are we not all united at the shit show it is? Why is this being done in the back end of June? It's ridiculous. And look, David De Gea is a human being. He's a, you know, he's a very, 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 very big part of our recent history. Deserves respect, in my opinion. It's really shambolic to be there 10 days from the end of his contract going, we want, you know, we don't, we don't know whether we want you anymore. It's, it's appalling and it's a mess. And, you know, as I say, there'll be people in the chat going, I don't care, I just want a new goalkeeper. But you're not looking at the financials. You're not looking at the people running the club. It's an embarrassment. It's an absolute shit show, as I say, because you shouldn't, this should have been done in March. They should have said in March, we're not renewing your contract. We're going for a first team goalkeeper. But they didn't because they weren't planning on doing that until probably a week or two ago. They literally shifted their transfer plan a week or two ago and started thinking, should we spend the money that we've got for Kane on a goalkeeper now? Because we can't get a top striker. It, it, it's concerning. But what it does what it does show, and I'll put my hands up here, what it does show, and I can't lie about this, what it does show is an uncertainty around De Gea for Ten Hag that he's even contemplating allowing his transfer plan to swivel in the middle of June. But it doesn't look good on Eric either. And, you know, I've, I've seen a few people saying, look, I like Ten Hag. I don't know what he's doing with Mason Mount. I don't know why we're missing out on targets and why why we're shifting around now. But, you know, it's chaotic. It is chaotic. That you know, that club is chaotic at the moment, however you look at it. Goalkeeper's position was not a need in this window, says Royston. Um, we've also had a super chat come in from the Inquisition. The board is not showing their competence this window, which is bad news for them. Oh, no, we've done that one. It just keeps staying. Don't know why. Um on the takeover, Mark, it's my 25th birthday today. Can I get a shout out? I love the show, says Rodney. Happy birthday to Rodney, 25 today. Someone get a warrant for the Glazers for holding the club and fans hostage, says Double J. Um, so, look, the Guardian did a piece a little bit earlier saying that nobody would bet on the outcome of the sale at the moment, but Qatar Althani remain confident. Um Last week was weird. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm fortunate. I had a weekend away. I feel quite refreshed. Um, there was a, I'll be honest with you here. There was a part of me middle of last week when we were talking about the speculation of the sale and I'd booked this weekend away. And I was like, oh, you know, do you know, I wasn't going to cancel it because it was a family break. But I was thinking, oh, you know, if I'm away, I want to be going down the lazy river and doing the rapids and playing a bit of badminton and having a few pints watching the Ashes. I don't want to be going live in a bloody, on a holiday break. Um, fortunately, I wouldn't have been able to do it anyway. I'd have been there on dial-up, so I wouldn't have been able to do it. But I, I've got to be honest, when, I, when we got there Friday night, I just knew. I knew there wasn't going to be any, any, I knew there was going to be no big announcement this weekend. I knew we wouldn't amounts of transfer I knew there'd be nothing on the sale and lo and behold I, you know I could have stayed till tonight you know it was it was nothing did happen um and yet we had that crazy week last week uh where do I what do I think is going on at the moment well look the New York Stock Exchange wasn't even open today so um you know that in itself is is, is always worth bearing in mind there could be some movement again tomorrow. The dollar size, the dollar size of uh, United at the moment is around twenty-four dollars per share. So it's you know it's stabilised around potential for a sale. Um, my feeling is, and uh, you know, I've not heard anything while I was away. Nobody's who was loads of people messaging me last week. You could message them, they'd give you a message back. I've not heard anything about this week, but I feel like tomorrow maybe. We'll, we'll, you know, it will start kicking up again. Um, but it could be weeks. It could be days. It could be tomorrow. I, I don't know. Um, but it's already been too long. Um, hi, Mark. Have you seen the speculations about Chelsea? Apparently, the Saudis invested heavily in the takeover. And now Chelsea are selling players to Saudi clubs. People are saying fishy thoughts as Rajin. And I just found out, found out I'm expecting my first kid. And I think they will be here before United is sold, says John. Uh, congratulations to John and your partner. Um, can I just say, Rajin, somebody asked me about this before. On the Chelsea situation, and I'll probably get bloody get clipped up as a champion for Chelsea here, but I'm not. Can I just say, 
if Man United had shareholders who were Saudi Arabian and they were going to give us £100 million for Harry Maguire and Scott McTominay, would Gary Neville or anybody else be moaning about the morals of football? I'm sorry, I find it a little bit like a broken record. Let's get the regulator in. Let's do this. It's too late and I don't care. I've, you know, two years ago, I wouldn't have want Qatar anywhere near United because I don't want the club to be having the cheat code. But that's what football is. Man City have just won a bloody treble. They've got 115 charges. They might get away with it. I, I don't even care about the outcome of the 115 charges. I'll be honest with you. If they get away with it, I won't be surprised. They've already done it anyway. They've already won the treble. They've won the treble with money. Football sold its soul to money decades ago. It's over. If you like football, just enjoy it for what it is. The game that's played on the grass. The game that's played behind the scenes. It's big money. We're giving Rashford 350k a week. You know, we can't talk about morals when Man United have been chucking stupid money at players for years. We're just moaning about it because we're jealous. Man City have just won an Abu Dhabi funded treble. Newcastle will follow soon with their Saudi Arabian money. We want Qatar for the same reason. What is the issue with Chelsea having, you know, funding from Saudi Arabia and then some of the Chelsea players are going to Saudi Arabia? It's... I, I don't actually get the problem. I really don't. It's because it's Chelsea and not us. If it was us, we'd go, oh, and you know, that that's the thing. It's the sour grapes that pisses me off because you can see through it. We moaned about Newcastle because ultimately we're jealous. We moaned about Man City because ultimately, ultimately we're jealous and we hide it behind morals. But then when Qatar comes in for United, piss off Sir Jim, we want Qatar. The ultimate thing is, it's not about morals and it's not about hypocrisy. It's about football fans knowing now, if you want to be successful, you need money. I'm not arguing about this anymore because it's about money. And I'll guarantee you, you know, Gary Neville will be going on about Saudi Arabia, but when we're owned, when we're owned by Qatar, I bet he won't refuse a job on the board at Man United. So I just think there's a level of moaning which ultimately comes down to bitterness. Saudi Arabia, if they had a shareholder in Manchester United and they wanted to pay us 50 million for Maguire, we'd be all over it and say it's fair. And ultimately, one thing people do need to realise is the Saudi Arabian League is very ambitious. They've just bought Ruben Neves from Wolves for 50 million. No one said a word. He's only got a year left on his deal. He's probably on 50 million pounds a year. It's completely and utterly ridiculous. But they give £100 million to Chelsea for Mendy, Aubameyang and Ziyech. And, oh, it's corrupt because they've got Saudi Arabian investors. But they've just given £50 million to Wolves for Neves. He's got a year left on his deal. It's not like they're not doing paying silly money for lots of players. So I just think it... I, my personal feeling is I, I really just don't care. You know, it's what football is. You can't have you can't eat the eat the cake and then moan when somebody else is eating a better cake. Mark, we all know what scums the Glazers are. Just a very weird feeling that if they actually have decided to sell it to Qatar, no way in hell the Glazers are spending a single penny before leaving. So Surab, uh, when Ali left, there was none of this show respect or class. Instead, it was praised as the right decision. What's so different with our goalkeeper? Says Rash. Oh, I, I don't reply to Rash. He's full of shit. Sorry, it's it's a well known thing. Um, that's actually not too bad what he said, but normally it's really bad. Hi Mark, it's good to be back home watching you live rather than watch your live streams whilst you're in ports since I work on a cruise ship. Thank for always. Keep us all posted, says Paul. Paul, enjoy your break. Thank you very much, mate. Um, so yeah, somebody, a few people have asked me about that Saudi Arabian thing. I, I just, I just see it as sour grapes. It's the same when Newcastle bought, uh, Saudi Arabia bought Newcastle. I don't really see the problem. And actually, forget that Chelsea have got Saudi Arabian investors. £100 million for Mendy, Ziyech and um, Aubameyang. The, the way Saudi Arabia is spending money at the moment, it's not even that surprising. It really isn't. Um, what do you think about Chelsea being denied the Paramount sponsorship to Zealous? Well, it's not the Chelsea stand. So, you know, I've had, I've had one conversation there. But bringing it back to the ownership... Um, the vast majority of this fan base are ready to sell whatever. I mean, it's not even about morals, is it? It's not. I, I think in football, we all try and cling on to morals, but that they were, we didn't sell them. You know, 
ultimately you either you either follow your club in this current guys or you don't uh, those concerned about Qatari human rights need to take a hard look at Ineos record on worker abuse anti-union stance workplace safety and environmental damages just last year their employees died on the job says Shahin um, and uh, we all see say City's treble is irrelevant because they bought it how would ours be any more relevant if we bought it as well says Cyber well I, I don't I think you make a good point I don't think I, I, look if you want to see United win a treble, I think the only way to do it in the modern game is to do it the way Man City do. I think you've got to invest a lot of money. Only I and some older fans can tell you whether it feels the same as '99. I don't think it will. I don't think you can. I don't think you can replicate that again. It felt hard. It felt like m miraculous. It felt like you know it was almost the impossible dream. Um, you know we had four or five homegrown players in the match day squad every, you know in the in the team sometimes um yeah i i think we, you're not you're not going to do it again unless you pay for it like i don't think i mean look Leicester city wasn't that long ago i was having this chat with someone at the weekend i hope i'm wrong i can't see a Leicester city again i can't and people will say look well it, it happened less than 10 years ago but I can't see it again. But I, and I'll, I'll admit, I couldn't see it happening before Leicester did it. But I can't see that again. I think when Leicester did it, it was the perfect storm. Man City went through transition. United were going through another shit year. I think, you know, our, Liverpool must have been still shit. And obviously Arsenal and Spurs are bottlers. And I think Chelsea were going through transition as well. So Leicester hit their perfect season at a time where nobody else was really ready. I can't see that happening again. Can you imagine Man City, Man United, Arsenal, Liverpool, Chelsea, Newcastle all having a bad season and then, you know, Villa come through and win it? I, I, can't, I can't see it. I, I, can, I can see Villa winning it, but I think to win it, Villa have to become the, you know, the Man City or the Newcastle. I think they have to be funded massively to do it. Um so yeah, look, I I don't think you can win a major trophy these days on, you know, an amazing underdog season. I think you've got to do it with money. Can you imagine Saudi offered fifty million from Maguire? No way you would say no. Thanks. We have morals. Yes, please give us the cash. Says Daza. Exactly, exactly. Don't be hypocrites. If Saudi Arabia wanted to buy Maguire, McTominay, and Fred for hundred million, most of us would be packing their bags. Says Stephen. But you know what? The stupid thing is, Stephen, if United. And I, I, I pretty much know this to be true. If Man United got in contact with with the Saudis and said, these are a selection of players we've got for sale, do you want any of them? They would give you good money for them. Like They, they would love to take Fred. They would take Fred. They would love to take um, David De Gea. You know, Fred De Gea, they would take them 100% into that league. Now, I'm talking about players that we might want to go. I don't know whether they would want Maguire or, or McTominay, to be honest. They, they probably offer something, but I don't know about those two. But they would take Fred. They would take David De Gea. Um, and they'd probably give you... I mean, look, the, the stupid thing about De Gea is... I was thinking about this today. The stupid thing about De Gea is, right, because we've not extended his contract by a year, which was stupid... We could have had to. We we could have actually got money for that. No one's mentioned this, by the way. David de Gea's contract runs out at the end of this month because we didn't extend it by year. We extended Rashford's, we extended Shaw's, but we didn't extend David de Gea's. And the reason we didn't do it is because he's on three hundred and fifty k a week. And if we extended it by a year, de Gea could have said quite rightly, "Well, let's negotiate a little bit longer." And then all next season he earns three hundred and fifty k a week. So United realistically probably thought well let's get him on a new contract and let's not offer the year but the stupid thing is and they've missed the right trick here because De Gea won't sign the contract now because they've pissed him off but if we if we'd seen what was coming with Saudi Arabia and we should have bloody seen it because one of our players started it in Ronaldo what we should have done in January is extended De Gea's contract by a year carried on with the negotiations and then this summer said to Saudi Arabia, do you want David De Gea? And they'd probably given us 20 million. So we can't even get a fee out of Saudi Arabia for David De Gea. But 
we can we could get a fee out of him for Fred. Um, off topic, Mark, can you please put them in descending order, the most underrated of these three? Ji Sung Park, Michael Carrick and Dennis Irwin. Dennis Irwin, number one. I mean, I wouldn't even put Carrick in there, mate. I don't. I, I never thought that uh, he was underrated, but um, if he is, Carrick two and then Ji Sung Park three. Very underrated players, very good players. Because we're not buying relevance like City did, we're already the biggest team with the greatest history. Finally getting to where we belong, says Thomas. Um... And Maguire is actually bad, isn't he? How is he playing right now? I don't know. Macedonia playing it around us like we aren't there. Potter is free. England get him now, says Nathan Allen. Nathan Allen. Um, I, I don't watch England. I, I can't stand England. Somebody said, why aren't you doing a watch along? I cannot stand watching England. I'll watch it in the Euros. I'll watch it in the World Cup because I fall into the trap of the, of the tournament. Um, but I can't watch England in international friendlies or tournaments and you know, qualifiers anymore. Did you hear what Southgate said as well about Maguire? He said when he's played for Manchester United, when he's played for England, he's done a very, very good job. Mate, he doesn't get picked for Manchester United, you absolute imbecile. So no, I, I can't watch it. I can't. I can't. I don't like Southgate. I think he's ridiculous. Um, I actually think I'd do a better job. I think you'd do a better job. Remember when Eric Ten Hag came in and he said they wouldn't pay anyone over 200k a week, now giving Rashford way over that, says Ajit. Well, I don't, I, I don't think Ten Hag said that, Ajit. And let's not forget, Eric Ten Hag does not negotiate the contracts. There's a, very weird, there's a very simple way to explain this, and you should never blame Eric for this, but there's a very simple way to explain it. Eric Ten Hag has told the club to get Rashford on a new deal. Massive part of my plans, get him on a new deal. Eric Ten Hag doesn't say give him 350 grand a week. That's on the board. That There's people to do that. Eric Ten Hag says to the club, get me Kim Min Jae. That's the centre-back I want. It's not Eric Ten Hag who fucks up the deal. Eric Ten Hag says, go and get me Rasmus Hoyland. He really wants to come to the club. He's really excited. If he doesn't come, it's not Eric Ten Hag who fucks up the deal. I know for a fact, and have known for a long time, that Rasmus Hoyland wants to come to Manchester United and will come to Manchester United. I know for a fact that Eric Ten Hag wants Rasmus Hoyland at the football club and absolutely wants him. You know, the reason I've been saying for three weeks this deal's hotter than the sun is because, and, and I'll be honest with you, they're the two, not one, they're the two really strong bits of information from the manager, from the player. In nine times out of ten, at Chelsea at Man City, at Liverpool. That deal's done based on that. Player in love with coming to United. Manager wants player. That that will be it. The issue is the board. Because we've already seen it happen this summer. Like I, I would even I would even argue whether I wanted this deal to happen or not, I would even argue the Harry Kane deal's been fucked up by this board because again, Harry Kane wants to come to Manchester United. Eric Ten Hag wants him. Conversations have been going on for months. Do you think those conversations were, I'd love to come to Manchester United, but they would never let me out. We'd love you at Manchester United, but they'll never let you out. Let's talk again next week about that. No, there will have been some plan in place that's just fell apart because Daniel Levy said, no, that's your plan. Piss off. If we miss Kim Min Jae, I wish someone would throw dirty shoes and rotten eggs at Joel and Avram, says MM. Uh, Rashford set up short to assist Kane at Old Trafford just now. What could have been if the Glazers wasn't holding us hostage, hostage says Scotty. Uh, just as you were talking about Southgate, Maguire went in with the diving header, obviously hit the corner flag, says Nick P. And the board is not... I've done that one as well. So, yeah, look, I think that... Um, I think it's unfair to say that Ten Hag has anything to do with wages or transfers... He sets the targets. One thing I will say is, if you don't want Mason Mount, you, you can put that on Eric Ten Hag because that's his choice. Um, but on the strikers, he might end up with fourth or fifth choice. Um, you know, I think we're all intelligent enough and passionate enough about Manchester United to be able to dig deeper than the sun. And whatever striker we end up with will not be his in his top three. It won't be in his top three. Um, the centre-back, if it's not Kim Min Jae, will not be his high-priority centre-back. If it's Rabiot, he won't be getting his top three midfielders because his top three midfielders, Rabiot's not in it. Rabiot's in there because he's value for money and he likes him and he wanted him last year. 
but De Jong will always be his number one choice. Declan Rice, Casido, and then probably somebody else. I'm trying to think. Maybe maybe Lavia. I don't know. But Rabiot will come in because he's free. He likes him. He does want him. But he's not. He hasn't been saying since January. Oh, John, Richard, Merry Christmas. Get me Rabio. All I want for Christmas is Rabio. You know that's not the case. So it's it's shaping up to be a summer of third and fourth choices. Well, if you get third and fourth choices, you finish third or fourth. That's the bottom line. Ian at says Rashford, Shaw, Kane should have uh, happened at United. Um, and Mark, can you remember when we bought in the first summer transfer where you covered in your first year of United? Can you remember who we bought in the first summer transfer you covered at United, Darren? Um, my first summer transfer window I covered would have been the second summer transfer window of Van Hal. Because the United, the United stand started halfway through the first season of Van Hal. I'm pretty much sure. No, well, it was going on a little bit longer than that, but it was called Soccer Box. Um, so, was that the summer where Schweinsteiger, Schneiderlin, um, yeah, I think that was our first first one, yeah. Um, Fellaini was, no, no, it wasn't Fellaini. Fellaini was Moyes. Reuters confirmed Qatar was about to get exclusivity and we haven't heard a peep since. Guesses as to what's happening on that front, says Kale. Um... Well, I think I think that uh, Qatar want exclusivity because they they don't want to get bounced around like a ping pong ball, um, you know, Chuckle Brothers. It's basically Chuckle Brother negotiating to me, to you, to you, to me, to me, to you. This is what's happening with the United and the Glazers at the moment. To me, to you, to you, to me. You got Sir Jim and Qatar. To me, to you. To you, to me, it's the, the basically you bid. To you, you bid. Back to you, you bid. The reason Qatar wants exclusivity is so that one of the Chuckle Brothers disappears, which has actually happened in real life. It's very sad. Rest in peace. So you've just got one Chuckle Brother now. Well, you've just got one bidder now. Confusing myself. Um, that's why Qatar wants exclusivity because. It wouldn't be going backwards and forwards anymore. It's just them. But of course, the Glazers have to agree to exclusivity. And if they don't agree to exclusivity, it's Chuckle Brothers again. To me, to you, and it can go on for a very long time. Can't believe he didn't want Kane at Man United. He looks at home at Old Trafford and makes scoring look easy. Now we are buying 100 million for a young boy, says Rory. Um, Rory, I didn't say I didn't want Harry Kane. I said I wanted Victor Osman. We're not getting it. We're not getting him either. If if you'd said to me it's Harry Kane or nobody, I'd have gone Harry Kane. I always said if we get Harry Kane, I'll back him. He's a world class striker. So it's nothing to do with me on not getting Harry Kane. Um, if you can't believe we're not getting Harry Kane, have a look at the board. I mean, I can't believe. You know what? I can't believe at Rory. I can't believe for the last six months, from basically Christmas, United want Harry Kane. The transfer window opens. We can't get him. Bye. I mean, what what's that all about? What's that all about? That's like being out with your mates and you see this girl in a bar and you go, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that, I'm going to marry her. Not tonight. I'm just going to get her number. I'm going to ask her for a dance, but I've just seen the girl on my dreams. We're going to get married. We're going to have beautiful children. This night is going to be amazing. And then, you know, every bar you go in, she's there with her mates and then you get to the nightclub and your mates say, well, go on then, go and ask her for a dance. Uh, no, no, I'm not going to do it. No. You've just spent all night going on about how great they are. I know, but I'm a bottler. I'm not going to do it. And and, and that's, that's basically what we've done. Because let's not pretend we haven't had six months of Robert McCormack and his bloody chats and his posters on the wall. He must be gutted. Uh, you know, my hunch was... I said back in October, my hunches will buy Harry Kane. You know, even I acknowledged there was a good chance of it happening. And what have United done? Absolutely nothing. They've, they've, they've walked up the aisle. They've invited everybody along. They've paid for the reception. You know, they've got the Pet Shop Boys tribute act ready to, ready to go. Everybody's invited to the wedding. They've walked up the aisle. There they are. And they've legged it. 
They liked it. I don't, I don't know what all the hype was about. Did nobody ever think that Daniel Levy was going to make it different? I hoped we'd have a better plan. You know, have you ever watched those films like where you see somebody making a really bad mistake and everybody knows they're making a bad mistake and you think, what a prat. But then the twist is it's all a decoy. They've got a, they've got a better plan. You know, we haven't got a better plan. We, the whole plan was to knock on the door and say, please let us have Harry Kane. Please let us have him. Oh, he'd do a great job for us. Please. He's only got a year left on his contract. Let us have Harry Kane for cheap. There's no, there's no, there's no plan, is there? There's, there's no super plan. It's just literally incompetence. Uh, what would you say if we swap Fred for Polina, says MM. Apparently West Ham wants him now. Um, Polina. Uh, can't believe you didn't want Kane. I've done that one from Rory. Rory. Mark, I've already given up hope on next season. Thanks to the Glazers and then messing up our summer plans, says Kevin. Wes, welcome to the Members Club. Thank you very much. And Glazers Out says, if we actually had competent staff, we would say we can't get Kane for 100 million, but we could get Ramos and Hoyland for 110. Why aren't we just proactive in the market? We are so poorly run, says Glazers Out. And it's like your mate inviting you for pints and saying he will buy them, but doesn't buy you any, says Jack. It's all talk and no trousers. That's what it is, Jack. This And look, some of you are very happy about what's going on with the goalkeeper. Obviously, you know, I really like the hair, so I'm not happy about it. But ultimately, it it comes down to shambles. It's a shambles. Like, we've got no structure in this transfer window. We're cha I think we wake up every day and change it. Just search stock soccer books to see any old videos you had and your best mate Gary has stole your name, soccer box. They always copy the goat. So it's just it. Mate, how Gary Neville came up with a programme called Soccer Box is hilarious, considering United Stand was called Soccer Box seven years ago for six months. It's hilarious. Um, but I could tell you a few stories about Gary, which I won't. Um, Mark, with the enormous scouting network, couldn't help they help Eric Ten Hag find a quality striker? He can't do it all, says Andrew. Mate, he's given them a list of seven strikers. They're, they're, they're systematically going through each one and fucking it up. Like, he can't... How many how many strikers do you want Ten Hag to give? 20, 30. He's given them a list of priority. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You know, they're going through that list more than Henry VIII went through wives. You know, they're screwing that... Well, well, I'm sure he screwed them as well, but they are literally destroying it by the day. Harry Kane, yeah, we've messed that one up. Osman, yeah, we've messed that one up. Um Evan Ferguson, well, yeah, we what was the point? We didn't even try. Um I've played the game, says old doctor. It's good to be back. It's good to be back doing these live shows at eight o'clock. Um I've done that one. I've done that one. Uh, Veghorst. Blah, 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 blah. Don't get me started on Veghorst. I mean, if we keep Veghorst, I think I'm just going to give up. But you know what? In relation to next season, let's ha let's add a little bit of clarity and calm. In relation to next season, Man City are going to win the league. Like We're not winning the league next year. We're, not, we're nowhere near ready to do it. What we wanted to see this summer was a sustained effort to try and go where Arsenal went last year because we could do that. That's what next season was meant to be. You know, building on the momentum of last season with five really quality signings coming in to knock us up a level. Well, what looks like it's going to happen at the moment is we're going to end up with five players that aren't as good as the five we bought last year because we're missing out on so many targets. So we'll lose a year of progression where we'll probably just, you know, hold firm. Maybe we win the Carabao Cup again. Maybe we get third place again. But the problem is, in football, as we all know, if you stand still, you go backwards. And in a year's time, Casemiro will be a year older. Varane will be a year older. And those players are going to need replacing at some point. So you're wasting a year of Casemiro and Varane and, and, and other players, you know. Just because somebody's 26, 27, it's still a year lost, you know, of Bruno, of Luke Shaw, etc. So... 
that'll be the disappointment. We, you, we're meant to be building every year and you can't build on third and fourth options. You build on getting your first and second options in and United at the moment are failing massively on that. That's not to say it can't be turned around, but it looks highly unlikely. Uh, which Man United striker from the past would be best for our current squad manager in your opinion, Mark, says Berber? Well, you know, I think a prime Mark Hughes would be fantastic for his hold-up play and his, you know, goal-scoring ability. But one that really jumps out for me, you know, I, I think I know we only had him for one year, but Van Persie, but probably Van Nisselrooy, Rooney, you know, we've had a few. I think there's a lot. The only thing I would say is that probably, you know, there are some strikers that were a little bit of their time. Um, you know, I don't think an Andy Cole or a Dwight York necessarily works in the setup that we have now. But I'd love them to be part of the squad. I mean, Andy Cole for me was, you know, in his prime was a fantastic striker. Solskjaer as well. But I'd say probably Van Nistelrooy, part Van Persie, um, you know, a prime Mark Hughes, a Wayne Rooney, that sort of thing. Um, I think you know people will say Ronaldo, you know, a prime Ronaldo. But Ronaldo prime at United was a winger. We need a striker that's got strings to their bow. You know, a prime Cavani, but not the Cavani at Man United would be very good as well. We're talking about what United had. And what we need in a striker is we need people with more to their game. They can't just be a, a penalty box striker. They've got to have something more to their game. Creativity, hunger, fight, passion, physicality. Um, still got your Who Wants to Be a Millionaire book, says Joshua Bowater. Yeah, it's up there. You just can't see it. It's above Sir Alex. Uh, it's on the it's on the top shelf with some other stuff. Uh, Mark, you're an absolute legend. You say it is top fella, says Adrian. Well, I've said it how it is, and um, I've got no intention of watching England. They make me want to throw up. Uh, Hoyland's just scored. Probably just added another ten million on his on his price. Um, we're back in the morning at ten o'clock, unless anything happens in between. Uh, thanks everyone for watching. If you're watching England, enjoy it. I'd rather wipe my ass with sandpaper to be honest I, I just don't know how you watch it i really don't i cannot stand southgate i cannot stand the way he coaches england and i think some of the players he picks are, is a disgrace so i just can't be bothered with it anymore um but i can be bothered with the united stand and i can be bothered with you fantastic audience tonight fantastic to be back make sure you smash a like and, su and subscribe get your comments if you haven't watched live really enjoyed the show um it feels like it's been a bit of a bank holiday this Monday. I don't know why. Maybe things will kick in tomorrow because we've got to start doing some stuff. It is the 20th of June tomorrow. Like another week and you're at the end of June and then you're into July and then we're going on tour. We've got to start doing things. Traditionally, you've got to start doing things. Let's see what happens. Take care, everyone. And uh, I'll speak to you in a bit.